I am Miriam Amet. I am the founder and executive director of No Shame on You. And we're so excited that you're joining us for our program tonight uh, with Tony Simmons. Uh, before we get into the main event, I just wanted to share a little bit about No Shame on You and how tonight is going to go. So founded in 2014, No Shame on You was dedicated to eliminating the stigma associated with mental health conditions and raising mental health awareness. Our goal is for the people who need help to seek it, for family members and friends to know how to provide proper support and to save lives. Since the pandemic, we have held over 190 online programs for all ages at no charge to participants. We have implemented a teen ambassador program and we currently have our second annual art challenge going on with some great prizes for K through 12th grade. And I'll put the link um, to the art challenge and some of our other programs in the chat so you can check that out. Uh, we also have a large online presence of over 115,000 where we share tools and resources daily. And for several years, we've had a weekly blog and a bi-monthly podcast. Tonight, we have been asked by many people to record the program. So we, we will be recording up to the Q&A and at that time to protect people's confidentiality, we will stop the recording. If you have a question at the end of uh, the conversation that, that Rebecca is gonna have with Tony, please feel free to ask me privately and I will convey the question to Tony without uh, saying who, who asked the question. You can also feel free to unmute yourself at the end and ask Tony, um, he would be delighted to chat with participants. It is now my pleasure to introduce uh, the moderator of the evening, Rebecca Pagonitz. Uh, she is a dear friend and dedicated No Shame on You board member and also happens to be an incredibly talented interior designer at GoGo Design Group. Part of what Rebecca, what makes Rebecca so good at her job is her creativity and ability to think outside the box. That is what also makes her a great board member. Thank you, Re Rebecca, for initiating tonight's program and in introducing No Shame on You to your friend, Tony Simmons, a special person I have come to know over the last months. We are so very grateful and I'm delighted to turn things over to Rebecca. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Miriam. That was really sweet. <laughs> I'm super excited to be here this evening to have a conversation with Tony D'Angelo Simmons, known as Touchdown Tony, about his mental health journey as an athlete. Tony is a multi-sport athlete, a track and field star at the University of Wisconsin. He also played football for the Badgers, and it was a member of the Rose Bowl winning team in 1998. Drafted in the second round to play in the NFL for the New England Patriots, Tony played in the NFL for six years, followed by a career coaching and playing football internationally. In fact, Tony has worked and coached on six continents in over 40 countries. Tony currently lives in Chicago and is the owner of Six Point Athletics, specializing in strength and speed coaching of amateur and professional athletes. He's also a really, really awesome personal trainer, no matter what level you are or what age. I'm just going to throw that in. Um, despite these career successes, Tony has experienced some mental health struggles. And we are here tonight to talk about his journey and how he overcame the stigma of getting help and finding the right resources that empowered him to be his best self again. Welcome, Tony. It is so awesome to be here with you. Thanks for <laughs> doing this for us and, and participating. Um, so my first question is, tell us about a little bit about your background. What was it like growing up as a teen playing sports in Chicago since you were six? And uh, when you were involved with sports growing up, you didn't have trainers and had to compartmentalize your feelings. What would you tell athletes now that there is more guidance from coaches and trainers? Um, well, growing up on the South Side of Chicago, um, so everybody didn't know what South Side of Chicago is. I grew up in the hood, but um, one of the biggest things is nowadays we have trainers for everyone. What we did back in the day was go play, go play outside and play. And parents used to always kick their kids out the house and, you know, you go outside and just play. And then you became an athlete. That's just how you're you used to uh, run the fastest. Who was the fastest guy? Run pole to pole or whatever it was. We did everything possible to just be outside to play. Nowadays, you know, kids are specializing in everything. We have a trainer for, uh, for dance. You have a trainer for this, that, that, correct. You know what I mean? It's not like it was before. Before it was we had karate, maybe a dance instructor. We have personal trainers that train speed, strength. And these kids are six, seven years old and they're being specialized into a sport now. And then when they get older, we hopefully they continue going on. But most of the time, most of those kids are burnt out before they even get to the sport. So for myself, 
it was just I enjoyed playing. I just love to play, go outside and do my thing and have fun. But again, you just did what you have to do to get through it. But when you are doing that, you had not just you didn't have a trainer that could help you out. We had fathers or mothers, or you had whoever sports you were in. Our father, you know, fathers would be just like, it's okay, stand up, don't worry about it, walk it all for whatever. We had those types of mentalities, and you failed and you got up and it could hurt, but you just stood back up and just said, that's just the way things are. And you kept it moving. And um, you didn't think about it then, as I think about it now, like, wow, you know, we were growing up to be tough. We had to be super tough. You're a guy, you're supposed to be tough. And, and we grew up with that mentality, but hey, that's what the media was giving us. And, you know, if you smoke cigarettes, you were tough. If you did this, you, you're tough. It was that mentality of, so I have to be tough. I can't, I can't cry. Crying was like bad, you know, things like that. Now, my mother never said that. It was just, I was always outside and that's just how you had to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and were there any other issues? Could you tell us a little bit about any other issues you had and feelings you had that you had to keep inside so you appeared more tough? Any challenges? Um, some of the challenges you had, especially with me, um, you know, being on the South side, I had to be tough. I had to hide, like, if I wanted to cry, I couldn't. If I fought people, I had to, I had to keep it in, like, it's okay, I'm gonna be all right, it's all right, I'm gonna, you know, you always, but you could never cry. You could never show weakness, because showing weakness was the best way that someone would take advantage of you. Um, that was just a way to get, get bullied. That was a, a, the easiest way to get bullied. And, you know, you don't want to do that when you're a kid. So we, those challenges were always walking around the corner. You know, we had the games and we had all that stuff. The games, they would try to put fear into you. So you back down and then they can take you. And, you know, I mean, it's just this whole thing. That mentality was there that if you were not strong enough, you would lose. And that's the one thing that people don't, don't, re, don't, don't remember. The streets were out, out there. And now those streets are changed now. But back then it was gangs, drugs. It was so much more stuff out there that we didn't, as kids, you just growing up and you want to go outside and play. And our parents didn't realize that that stuff was out there every day. But they understood it too as well, that I don't need you in the house under me all day, but I need you to go outside so I can get a break. And that was another way of getting it done. But you had we had friends and stuff that tried to keep us all even and uh, even killed and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. mostly it was just us being so tough. We had to, and you can't cry. You can't be, you can't show weakness because showing weakness gets you bullied. And that goes into a whole nother story, but showing weakness is not what you do, not outside in the streets. And I know everywhere outside those doors, you can't be weak, but inside the house, you can be the weakest person in the world. You can be a mama's boy. You can be a daddy's girl, whatever you want to do. But as soon as you walked outside, you had to be tough. And that goes for males, females, whatever. You had to be tough because out there, they don't care. So you know, even if somebody was, if you were going through something, you really had to like suck it up buttercup and keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And you also, I think what a lot of people here will find inspiring is you had a little bit of a physical challenge with your legs. And you yeah. figured out <laughs> with everything you were going through, you've still figured right. out how to excel with that physical challenge. Can you tell right. us a little bit? So um, when I was born, I was born with a leg shorter than other. I don't know. Don't, don't ask me how it happened. Maybe they pulled my leg too long or something. I have no idea. But when I was growing up, um, you know, I knew I always walked on the balls of my feet. I just, that's just how I walked. And that was everything. And, you know, my mom never thought of anything about it, but... When you go to the hospital, they tell you this, and they, you know, you're doing your checks, you know, see how tall you are and all this stuff. And they realized that one of my legs was shorter than another one. So first thing they said was, oh, we can, we can help that. We'll get them one of those. Uh, I don't know if anybody remember this and maybe I don't know the, the crowd, but they had the boot with the, the braces on your leg. And the shoe was about that high on one side, but the regular, I would have a regular shoe with a shoe like that. And it was a brace up my leg. And my mom was like, oh no, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. It's okay. Don't worry about it. He'd be all right. And I thought that was like, you know, I'm a kid. I don't know. Like, I don't know. But I realized later in life that my mom did me a favor because by her doing that, I stayed on the balls of my feet, which gave my cast, it overdeveloped my cast. 
which made me a faster runner. So mine stinks. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> it overdeveloped my calves. So even though I had a deformity, it turned into something that was like awesome that made me a faster runner and made me a better athlete. So it's kind of cool, you know what I mean? But to this day, I still, I actually have a heel lift that's in my shoes. And <laughs> one heel lift is this high and the other one isn't. So it's a regular shoe. And then, you know, I have orthotics on my feet and all stuff, but it worked. And um, I'm glad my mom did take that, that thing to make sure they didn't adjust my body. Cause my mom used to always say, um, your God gave you your body. You know what I mean? Whoever that is, that higher power that you believe in gave you the body. Now do what you need to do with it. And I did. And hey, I became an athlete. And I was there you are. So there you go. <laughs> so you were a star track and field and football athlete in mm -hmm. um, high school, which led you to get a full scholarship to the University of Wisconsin. Um, yes. Could you tell us about your freshman year and not playing at all? Uh, you mean uh, my freshman year in college? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. freshman year in college. All right. So, I come to the University of Wisconsin. I am Tony Simmons, right out of track. I uh, had a decent football season, but I was had prosperous potential. Uh, came out of track, was a 100, 200 meter uh, track champion. So, I'm one of the fastest in Illinois. So, yes, I'm going to the University of Wisconsin, I'm going for free. Yes, you know, whatever. Got everything. Everything's great. Uh, I graduated, finished state meet, and then June 1st hits, I go straight to school. I go straight to summer school because I want to try to get ahead of the college because I want to be an engineer. So I need to figure this stuff out and start understanding college. Um, as I'm there, um, practicing every day, doing everything, but my first year, they registered me, meaning you're not going to play this year. So, and I was like, what do you mean? I'm a good, I can play. What's going on? And it was, no, you're not going to play which means I sat the bench. I went to the home games and suited up with a uniform, but that was just it. And then that was like a challenge in itself because now I'm just there. And now I'm sitting wondering now, do I have the skill to actually play here? Do I actually have the skill to be a, uh, a University of Wisconsin Badger, you know, and time passed. And then that first time came we had an incident in my second year. So I went to track, had a great track season. Second year of college comes and we have the biggest incident that ever happened in the practice. Our star receiver, number one receiver, Lee DeRamis, he runs into my roommate at the time, runs into him on just to go up the day before a game. To go up, to go get the ball, they get locked legs and you hear the loudest pop in the world. Pop throughout the stadium. Now I'm on the other end doing scout team. We turn back around, our uh, star receiver is holding his leg and his leg just drops like this. He break, he has a compound fracture in his leg. Ugh. Now we have a problem because we're going into our first game. Now they look at two other receivers, my roommate <laughs> and me, and we're the next two up. So he was having a better, you know, better time, you know, better receiving week that week. So he gets the call. He's playing, he's doing his thing and he is doing an awesome job. He's doing great. And he does the one thing because my roommate has small hands, which I don't, <laughs> but he has small hands. He's running, he does an end around, he's coming around, he's running, he beats everybody, he is gone. Mm -hmm. He tries to put the ball up in the air and the ball falls out his hands. And it goes through the back of the end zone, meaning the ball goes to the other team, no touchdown. They looking at him totally different now. Then they came to me as in the second and third game. And lo and behold, I had one play and it was a go deep and catch the ball. And hence, touchdown Tony. My life started. My career as a player started. And yeah. I became touchdown Tony after the third game of the year and did not play. All of a sudden, I went from being the guy sitting on the bench like, oh, I'm never going to play. I'm OK with this. I'm right. All right. So <laughs> we need you to produce now. And I'm like, OK, OK, what am I supposed to do? And then there we go. <laughs> yeah. And you had these really intense expectations. Um, I'm wondering mm -hmm. how you handled that, where um, you told us you were scoring a touchdown every four catches. 
Yes. And the yes. expectations were super high. How did you manage that pressure and that mindset? Well, coming from not doing anything, you know what I mean? Like just sitting on the bench, you know what I mean? Grabbing people water, patting them on the back. Yeah, we're doing good to Tony, get out there, you know, and my coach got to the point that every four catches I was making a touchdown. So I would get a catch, a hitch route, something small, something real short. And then the fourth play would come and the coach would be like this, throw it up. And then they would throw it up, boom, I catch a touchdown. And all of a sudden I am the student section, touchdown, Tony. And this, this, I'm like, yeah, yeah, Kobe, I want the ball. You know, it's a game, different game. But in reality, it turned to me and start thinking, I went from just the guy that was just patting people on the back. And now I'm this, I'm pushed up into this whole mentality of you have to produce, you have to be this guy for us or us to win. And mentally, what I was thinking the whole time was, what am I supposed to do? What if I make a mistake? What if I, what if I do screw up? What if I don't make that catch when I'm supposed to? Or this, that, and that. And I am happy I had a support because trust me, when you are a touchdown Tony at those times, my head was not, my head was like that. It was huge. And I had my support to bring me back to reality <laughs> because I had a, a young lady uh, that was dating at a time in college. She was my support line to keep me in check. The other people were like, touchdown, Tony. Yeah, you're the man. Uh, it got bigger. And then she was like, you're touchdown, Tony, but you need to bring it back because don't let that get you out of, get you too far out. So I was happy I had a support that would keep me in check. Uh, most people don't. And that is one thing I would tell anybody, anybody, any athlete, make sure you have a support line that knows who you are versus what they want you to be. Because I was touchdown, Tony, yes. But overall, mm -hmm. I'm still Tony. I'm just a guy, just Tony mm -hmm. Simmons. That's all I would ever be. Okay, so then you get drafted to the NFL. And um, <laughs> yeah, woo -hoo, yay. No, that was, uh, that was, when you say NFL, that is the dream. That's the dream. That's what we do all this mm -hmm. for. That's why we play sports to go to the next level. And that was amazing just to have that happen. And what did you experience regarding approaches to mental health, mental health awareness? Um, mm -hmm. how, what, how have, what have you observed um, that things have changed in the NFL? Well, when we were there, you know, we still had that, again, like I said, that, that mentality was suck it up, buttercup. You're not hurt. Don't worry about it. You'll get over it. Walk it off. And that was just our mentality. We grew up that way. Um, and that mentality still carried on into the NFL during my years anyway. Um, but we didn't have it there. It was nothing there. If you had to do it, you had to go seek it yourself. That was the, the thing. We just had to go seek it. If you had some really, some real issues or something, you just had to go go do it yourself. They, they didn't have that. Um, now in the NFL, yes, it's everywhere. Since the movie Concussion, since uh, the biggest thing that most people didn't know, we have uh, PTSD. Or PS, no, PTSD, I was right, correct. <laughs> um, you know, that became a big issue. You know what I mean? It was like, wow, a lot of these players, this is why they are, they're, they're dying. This is why they're passing so fast. That's why they're committing so many high amounts of uh, suicide because we are all, we've all had concussions. We've had slight ones, whatever that was, but every, each concussion is different for everyone. Um, have I had them? Yes, uh, but mines were probably small compared to some people who take the real knockout hits and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I was fortunate not to be knocked out in the play. I've knocked people out but by getting hit, but I was also delivering a hit too as well. Um, but, you know, in that game, it's a warrior sport. We're inside the game. Any, anything inside those lines are, are the count. That's part of the rules. You know what I mean? That people lower the boom and now... Uh, we went through not just a whole change in uh, the mentality of how we tackle. You know what I mean? We changed that because of concussions and how, what concussions can do and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? It's just a, we, we went from not having a thing for that and you have to go seek personal help to we have right there the telephone call. Call them. Yeah, I need some help. 
And now we have that in the NFL, which is amazing for these uh, younger guys. Yeah. And do you feel now, I mean, certainly um, you would use me any mental health support that's available. Do you find that there are more players taking advantage of that? Or do you still sense there's um, a sense of shame still? Or um, You know what? You have, it all depends where you came from. Um, some guys probably still do it. You know what I mean? You're getting a lot more guys who are actually uh, getting into it. They're like, no, I'm something, something's up. Something's not right. Let me look into this, especially if you had a concussion anyway in the NFL now, they're on it. They're making sure it's being taken care of. Because remember, that's uh, that movie Concussion brought it all into the forefront and they use football. And football, everyone thinks football is the, the sport that has the most concussions, which actually isn't, it's actually soccer. They have the most concussions, which is the weirdest thing ever because people thought, well, soccer is not a contact sport or, or not a, um, it's not a collision sport. Mm -hmm. It's a contact sport. Like, yeah, you bump into each other, but they have no gear. They can get kicked in the head and they have the most concussions. They running into each other and things like that. But, um, you know what I mean? You got people who do headers and they, that's, that's, that could be a concussion right there doing headers like that. So, um, but being that way is we have now moved forward into a lot of it. A lot of guys are using it. They're actually taking uh, precautions on their own, on their own health because of mental health, because they know, one of the biggest things for a lot of players, and I'm probably, and I'm saying this, if something happened to my legs or my arms, I'm fine. I can deal with that. They grow. Uh, I can get my elbow back. That's not a problem. But if something happened to my neck or my head or my back, the game starts changing because you start realizing what is my quality of life. Um, and that became an issue for me. Like, I've had those ringers, and I don't know if anybody knows what a ringer is, but when that sound comes in your ear, you're like, oh, that's a concussion. <laughs> if you ever fail and you see the you open your eyes and you see the black and white and that we call that the birds and you see the black and white that's a concussion that's just a low level concussion we just people have head injuries all the time we just don't see it that way but if you mm -hmm. see it we only see it usually in that big sense like i got knocked out and you see the guy like this his hand you know what i mean we think that's a concussion that is a concussion that's a bad one but there are small ones too that some people get because at least for us as a player, we used to do neck exercises to make your neck so thick like wrestlers do. Our neck was so thick that when you took that hit, your, your neck didn't move like boxers. We didn't move, but you still got it. But it's just, how does it affect you personally? So when did you feel your mental health was declining? Well, mental health was declining probably years before like like years before that but when it really hit the hardest was when I was going in the NFL I was playing then all of a sudden the telephone didn't ring anymore um I remember I always picture it this way I walk into the stadium everyone was like yeah touchdown Tony woo and I'm walking, and then all of a sudden, I was in the middle of the field, and everybody, I'm like, yes, yes. Then all of a sudden, the lights start turning off. And then I was like, like, what just happened? What's going on? The telephone stopped ringing. Now I'm sitting here, so what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm not prepared for anything else. I've been a football player most of my life. What? I've been in sports all my life. What am I supposed to do? So now... You know, I realized, oh, I got money and this, this, and this. But now, um, what am I supposed to do? I haven't done anything. And then, you know, at that same time, I'm going through a divorce. So now things are going bad. And now I'm start, I started thinking, um, like, what, what am I supposed to do? What, what's next? What's next? You know what I mean? I'm feeling sad. I'm depressed. You know what I mean? I'm not sleeping properly. I got anxiety out the roof. And then all of a sudden... I start seeing this dark tunnel and I used to do this thing with the dark tunnel, meaning dark tunnel is the place I don't want to be, but I'm going to walk that tunnel. Why? Because I'm tough. I'm Tony Simmons. I'm touched down. I can go down there and come back. And I used to spend days down there, come back and forth, back and forth. And then I was like, something's wrong. Like I should not be doing this. But the good thing was in that time around 2000, uh, 2003, 2004, football was still around so I went to arena football so that pulled me out the tunnel again so I was out the tunnel yes back in the crowd the crowd was rev revving up again and then when I left football again 
I went back into the tunnel and I would like stay down there for just depressed, trying to figure out what's my next step. And then I went to the CFL, back out the tunnel. And then things were back good again. And um, then my mom gets sick about 2007. And I had to give up everything to make sure my mom was okay. Gave it all up, forget football. I'm trying to take care of my mom. And now I'm sitting there doing this. Now I'm doing my master's degree. My mom gets sick and I am super depressed. Like, cause my mom is sick, first of all. Second of all, I don't know what to do. Now football has not even thought about calling me again because I just walked away from the game. And for the next three years, I was in and out of tu- in and out the tunnel, getting that. And then I had those thoughts that came through that were saying, you know what? If if I am not here, my daughter's taken care of. Everything is taken care of because I have insurance and I have money, and they can just take it all, and everything will be better. And that was a thought process for me at one point. The what then, called- Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Say again. I mean, that's a really, I've been in that tunnel myself and I've actually had mm-hmm. the same thoughts. So I'll, I'll say it right here. Mm-hmm. Um, what, in, what was the impetus then if you weren't going to do fo- football and you were doing other stuff, what got you out of that tunnel? Did you reach out to friends? Who did you reach right, out yeah. to? So I was fortunate to have a friend. <laughs> she's a, she's a clinical psychiatrist now, but that's what she was going into. Mm-hmm. And my support was awesome. They kept my friends. All they did was talk to me. Like, it ain't that bad, man. Come on, you can get out of this. And, you know, and then not going through all that. And then, you know, needing, no, I needed to go to a divorce counselor and a therapist and trying to help me out with that. And, you know what I mean? And I was mm-hmm. going through so much and I was just out of it. You know what I mean? I was just trying to think of the easiest way out. And that was the way out for me at that time. But what pulled me really out was my support, my friends. Um, and then eventually I started realizing that I really need some help. <laughs> so I actually had, I have a, I had a great group uh, that helped me go through stuff. They're called MVP. That was a great opportunity to meet them. Uh, that's uh, military vets and players. There was a program developed through the NFL. They, it was through there. So they blew them up from there. Um, and then I know I still needed some help because they, we only can do so much. Uh, and that was a lot of the guys just talking about their problems and stuff like that through the military and, and through players. Cause we kind of similarly had the same mentalities and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then I reached out in the NFL and I said, I need a therapist. And they was like, Oh, we'll hook you up with one here. Here we go. And it was just a phone call away. I was like, wow. And the reason why I did that was an email. All of a sudden I was sitting there one day and I was like, Ugh, this Oh, what's this email? Hmm. Yeah, I've seen that email so many times. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And then for this time, I just clicked it. And then I was like, oh, so you're going to give me 10 free ones? 10 free sessions? <gasps> Who doesn't like free? Okay, because <laughs> I know how much those sessions really cost. So I was like, I don't know if I can do that. But, you know, and then I clicked it. They said, you have 10 free ones? Call them. Cool. I have a, I have a therapist uh, who has a sports-minded mind. So then I was talking to that person, you know, it's okay. And I enjoy them. And, but then I also got another therapist who's clinical. So I understand the clinical and the sports. So what I do is kind of play it. The clinical one, I talked to her first. She's telling me things. I'm like, yes, yes, you're right. You're right. So then now I, I bring that information and hold it. Now I go to my therapist who speaks sport to me. Same thing. They just speak sport mm-hmm. to me. Freaking awesome. Cause I figured out how to do it. So but what it did was basically the clinical was telling me the scientific part of it. The other therapist telling me and breaking the same thing that she's saying down into sports. And I'm like, this, yeah, yeah, now I get it totally. Perfect. Now I understand it. And it's perfect blend. And I was yeah. fortunate, fortunate to have two people who work with me mentally and got my mind together. And I'm here to even, that's why I'm happy now. I can hear to even say, to even be on this uh, call with everyone and just say, thank God, you got to find your support. You got to find a way. There's always a way. We just got to find it. Um, you need to just reach out. Sometimes reaching out is just easy as mm-hmm. just talking to a friend and then they might know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody to get that, get that ball rolling for you. Mm-hmm. Speaking of reaching out, and I'm going to shift the conversation a bit to youth and young people. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, what would your message be to youth um, 
and all ages about getting help. Um, you said there is strength in reaching out. Can you elaborate on that? I think a lot of young well, athletes would really love to hear that. Yeah, well, the strength is this. Um, we all gonna, you know, being in sports is it's a, it's own beast. Being an uh, athlete is his own beast. It's um, we have our our ways. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna. It goes for men and women's sports. We have our ways. We we have our little. I guess we call them hazing programs now. That's what they call them. But before it was just our way of right to be a, and uh, be a part of this group, or that was just a way for us. Now it's you know what I mean people. Are, some people went too far. You know what I mean? I went through mine. Some people went too far, and some people you know just do too much. But when you really think about it, that was just our right, you know what I mean? But no one has to, you are not meant to be disrespected in any way. It was just, this is what we do. This is how we are. This is how we become tough because mentally we have to be tough. I have to be able to count on you and you and you and you. I have to be able to do that, but this is how we did. And you can do it in multiple ways, but that's how it was for us because we have our own little thing. But for any athlete, if you feel that way and you ever feel, please, Talk to a friend, not in the sport, because sometimes the sport is the sport. That's what it is. You can't talk to everybody that's in the sport. You have to talk to people outside the sport. That could be a parent. Sometimes talk to your coach. Sometimes they're right there. Now, nowadays, coaches have taken the proper classes to, you know, to actually get the next level of help for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, everything you now is confidential now. Back in the day, it was, it was confidential, but people kind of knew stuff, too. But I would tell any kid, please just don't think you're alone. We all go through it. Some of us have to put that shroud of toughness on so they don't seem weak. And that's where yeah. most people need to understand. Yes, I was weak. Yes. But it takes strength to actually say, you know what? I need help. I'm like a man. I'm a man. I'm sorry. Man, we don't ask for directions. Baby, you need to turn. Baby, I got this. I got this. <laughs> don't worry about it. I know exactly where I'm going. We're lost. You know in your head, I'm lost, I'm lost, but I'm not going to ask for help. Why? Because I don't want to look weak. If your she wife just said, or your significant other said, listen, all we have to do is go here because she can read the map. You're like, oh, okay, you know, I, I knew that. I knew that. <laughs> That's how we are. We are men. We do stuff like that. Women have their eggs. They do the same things too with some mm -hmm. things, but that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have to all understand we all need help somewhere. We just, yeah. sometimes we just want to not need help because you know what if i need help i need i'm weak and that was a mentality as when we were growing up from back in the day 70s 60s 70s 80s into the 90s that's how it was nowadays not like that you can ask for help now we have help online pick up doo -doo. we got google i can find any therapist i need doo -doo. there you go it's simple mm -hmm. i have alexa i have this i have that we have a phone that's in my i have i, I have 24 hour help every day we just have to start using what we have to make us better human beings and better citizens of the world. Mm -hmm. So true. Um, and I know um, a lot of sense of self-esteem is attached to mm -hmm. sports and younger people. And mm -hmm. there are some kids who really love sports, but they're not always mm -hmm. a starter and that can affect their self-esteem if they're on the bench yep. all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, what would you say to those kids um, who love the sport so much, but aren't necessarily a starter and don't play all the time? Well, I'll always say stay in there. Stick with the sport, no matter what. If you can't play and you decide, you know what, I don't like the sport because I can't play. Well, why well, you got to play to enjoy the sport? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who enjoy sports without playing. There are people who were, that started off as the water boy, bringing the water to the players, blah, blah, blah. Now they own the team. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not a player no more. I own the players that play on my team. You know what I mean? That's just how it works. So mm -hmm. I would always say just stay, stick with the sport. You know what I mean? I've seen, I've seen that story. I've actually played on the team and that was the story. The guy, he started off as a water boy and he owned the team and not just one, but three teams in the CFL. So he just stuck with the sport and he, he said it himself. I wasn't the greatest player. I wanted to play. I wanted to get out there. It wasn't a Rudy situation. He was like, I just wasn't a good player. <laughs> just, I wasn't good. But he thought he wanted to stay in the sport so much and he loved it that he just, he learned the business of the game and then he eventually grew. 
and then he became the owner of one team and not uh, only won the second one, then he bought a third one. And when you're the owner of three teams, mm-hmm. you know, and you were the water boy, hey, I'll be the water boy in these days because I, I love to own a team. I don't get that. I'd rather be the water boy and become that besides being a player because a player is, you know, if you think about it, a player's uh, playing time is only, it's really finite. But owning the team, can be infinite it could be forever because your family will always own that team Mm -hmm. and it's almost as if everyone has a role everyone has everybody has a role and everybody has a role in everything that's what i learned from my kids yeah yeah you just have to find Mm -hmm. out where you belong like everybody can't be a player sorry if if whatever sport you're in there's only so many players can get on the field you Mm -hmm. know what i mean and also if you're waiting to get on the field you got to wait sometimes it's maybe it's not your turn that's it's not your turn but when it's your turn you have to shine because there are players who wait their turn, then they get out there, and then it's a goose egg. And then it's like, what happened? You were this great player, then all of a sudden you panicked, you freaked out, and then it's over. And you only get sometimes in sports, you only get one shot. And that's that's the ability of sports. It proves one thing. You need to be on point. When it's time, it's your time to shine, you need to shine. If you're not shining yet, it's not your turn yet. It's not your turn. So I would rather tell anybody, be ready for the shot and be prepared for when it's your chance. Because when it happens, it happens. Everybody's seen the, the story of Rudy. If you've never seen it, watch it. Mm-hmm. it one opportunity. And he went in there, made a great play. They put him, you know, take him off the shoulders. Da, 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 da. That's the story. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't know if it exactly happened that way, but you know what? The movies make it look better. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Tony, thank you so, so much. Um, I'd love to open up. Um, I'm going to turn over this conversation over to Miriam, and we're going to move forward with the Q&A from all the per- people here in the audience. So thank you so much, Tony. That was that not was a great. problem. It was, am- I'm just, <laughs> hopefully I reached one person. They just mm-hmm. need to understand we are all here to help. Everybody's trying to help each other. And if you don't reach out and ask for help, or at least think about somebody asking for help, just just have the just have enough toughness to say, I need help. It's okay. Because you know what? Saying okay, I need help, it's okay. It's okay to have be to need help because you know what? We all need it. Um, even the top athletes in the world. They need help. Trust me. And most of these athletes nowadays, they have therapists, they have everybody. And I, as I say, we have a team of people that work on one body, mind, body connection. We have this team of people that work on it from mental to physical to spiritual. We have an entire person in there. Everybody don't have the money to have them. So that means you have to piece your people around you to help you get to where you want to be. <laughs> so do what you got to do to do it. But it's part of the deal. That's just how we do it. Thanks, Tony. No problem. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tony. Uh, we have gotten a bunch of questions. You are definitely okay. many, many people. No problem. <laughs> so, uh, thank you and Rebecca, you did such a fantastic job. Thank you. Oh, um, sure. So along the lines, you were just talking about youth and um, mm-hmm. you mentioned that you, you keep going for it even if you're not there yet. Um, is right. there a way for them to protect their mental health given the potential disappointment, disappointment of not making it to the next level? Yes, you know, I mean, some of those situations, it, it just happens. To protect your mental health, don't don't get down on yourself about, oh, because I didn't play. Sometimes we have to take a real good look at ourselves and say, do I deserve to actually be on the field? Because everybody, we are in this now, this world of uh, participation award. Everybody should play. Everybody shouldn't play. That's... That's that mentality we keep saying that everybody's going to play. And then when you get to reality, everybody doesn't get a job. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the reality that we all don't work. We all can't work. Why? Because you, I want to I wanna be an astronaut. Well, Tony, you know, I don't think your GPA is high enough to be a G, uh, an astronaut. Well, you know, I think I could be one. So why can't I be an astronaut? You know what I mean? That's the reality of it. Everybody can't do what they want to do. You have to be honest in yourself to say, Am I, am I a good player? Can I really be on that field? Looking at all these players playing, is it true? Do I have the real skill to be out there? And if you believe that, then you need to talk to your coach. Just say, why, what can I do to get on the field? 
how can I be on the field? And some coaches got to be real with these players. And some of these parents need to back out sometime. Your kid might not play. Why not? Because they're just not good at this or good at that. You know what I mean? But I'll give you suggestions. We can help them develop this and that, and they could possibly play. But they, again, it's an inter look at yourself to say, can I really do this? Versus I should play because everybody don't play. And that's just the way the game works. Everybody can't play. So protecting your mental health is, let's be real. Do you deserve to play? Are you doing everything to play? Versus I supposed to be out there because I'm, that's just the way it is. No, that's not how it works because that's how some people get injured. That's how other players get injured. That's how you're mentally, you're out there and then you, there's this guy or girl who's way better than you and they make you look bad. Now, do you want to go out there? <laughs> you know, it's how it works. It's, that's what the good thing about sports. You find out real quick if you're good and you're not. You'll find out real fast. <laughs> Got it. Okay. So there's, it's almost like a learning grade. So um, in terms of that, that balance of finding out, um, the question, um, if during a, a mental or emotional dark period of time, when you were, let's say, mm -hmm. preseason in practice or during, okay. during practice or even well, well, during well, a game, that what's that? Um, what okay. tools or method did you use to put your issues aside and get into the mode to like get into game zone in practice um, when your performance obviously needed to be at a pro level um, mm -hmm. including teamwork and enabled you to sort of reach that peak level. How did, how did that work to just get in the zone even if you were going through that dark time and how did you shift your, your mental uh, approach? Okay, um, so, so they're talking about when I went from, so I was in a dark point, I was in that dark tunnel, I got that part. And then they're talking about how did I get myself to say, okay, now it's time to shine. Turn the light on. Let's go. We got to do this. Right. Like um, that dark what was I doing? The type of yeah. things I was doing. So even though you're in a dark tunnel, no matter if you're in a dark tunnel or not, sometimes you're still, you're still out of hope as long as you can. Ooh, as long as, you, as long as you are able to pull yourself up from the bootstraps. They said, pull yourself up from the bootstraps. You got to do it. No matter what it is, we have team, you have a teammate. They're, they're, they're depending on you to do your best. And what I always said, I never want to disappoint them because they didn't do, they didn't put me in this area. I am in this area for whatever reasons that I am there, but that's not their fault. And that's not their, I should not bring myself to, uh, to say, well, only reason I'm doing it is I'm having a bad day, guys. I can't play well. They like, no, no, that's not what you do to your teammates. Your teammates need you to be on every day. If we're out there performing, then I need to perform. I can have a bad day. You got to throw that away. I am here to make sure my, I impress my teammates. I'm always impressing my teammates. I'm trying to impress myself and put them on the same. Man, Tony, you play well. Because some of my darkest moments was my best games. And that was the funniest thing because I was using that as a, I may bark, but I gotta, I, I'm, I'm here to impress them. Not the people around uh, the stadium and all this stuff. I'm here to impress my, my friends, my friends, my teammates. That's who I came to impress. I could be in the darkest hole ever, but I'm going to impress them because you know why? They know what I can do. They see me do it. They just want me to do it when it's time. And I have to do it every time I'm out there. So don't think it's just, it's a slight switch. It's The switch is on all the time. It's just, you got to start seeing where am I at? Because my teammates need me here. They need me here. I may be here mentally, but for me to be where they are, I have to make sure I'm here with them because we are a team. And that's where we came from. It's teamwork. There's no iron team. You know what I mean? If you do see an iron team, it's because it's between the a-hole, whoever the a-hole is. So, you know, whatever. Got it. So you had to, <laughs> so you had to, um, you would channel almost the darkness into. Yeah, I channeled into the darkness into making it a positive because it is what it is. I can't, I can't expect my, my teammates to understand what I'm going through personally. Um, right. And, you know, sometimes you actually tell some of your friends personally what's going on, but they look at you like, and what that got to do? Right. Dude, we got to play. We got to win. You know what I mean? Right. We, we trying to go to the playoffs. We trying to go to state or we trying to win this championship. Put that away, bro. We, when you step on the field, my coach used to say this. Um, when you step on the field, leave all your problems on the sideline. Because we leave that there. 
when you come in this door, it's about the sport. It's about the team. It's, this is beyond you. It's not just about you anymore. It's about us. So when you leave at that door, it's like when you put the coat outside the door and you walk into the office, leave your problems out there. That's your problems out there because we need you as a team. We need your focus. But when you go back out there, you can pick it right back up if you want. That's on your, that's your choice, you know? And that's when you start realizing it's a choice. We start making choices. And I know it's hard and some people don't want to make choices, but that's what we do. We make the choices and sometimes we got to make the hard one. And that is one. You have to decide, what do you want to do? You want to, you want to let your teammates down, your friends, the people you do all that, all that stuff with precedes and running up and down those hills, breathing, throwing up. Okay, oh, I'm tired. I, and, and, but y'all fall through all that. Now, you don't want to perform because something's going on? No. Step up. Now you have to step it up because you, we need you. Right. No, that's very helpful. Thank you. Um, so another person had a question. It, they said, it mm -hmm. sounds like Tony has been blessed with a strong support system in his life, which is great. Was mm -hmm. there any advice or words of support in particular that you found really helpful over the years? So often like folks want to reach out to a friend who may be struggling, but they feel they don't know what to say or don't want to say the wrong thing. So what have you found most helpful uh, for you along the way uh, to hear? Okay, uh, I will say this, this is from my mom. And everybody has to understand my mom passed and uh, she passed last year in 2020. Um, my mom used to tell me this when I was a kid. I sit on her bed, little kid, legs flipping off the side, watching, watching Scott, watching Walter Payton do his thing. Tony Dorsett do their thing, you know what I mean? Throwing touchdowns, oh, Joe Montana. Yeah. That was me. I was all in there like, that was me. Yeah, yeah, they, they to me. You know, that was me. I used to say, Ma, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of you one day. I'm gonna take care of you. She was like, baby, you can do whatever you want as long as you put your mind to it. And I heard it so many times <laughs> i think it stuck and then as i had other coaches tell me they would just tell me things like remember how it used to be when you went outside and play when the world was just free you didn't think about playing a professional sport you didn't think about that stuff you just went outside and played remember them days because those are the days that bring you to where you are now remember the days when everything was just fun we we in sports now every the fun is gone because we know it's a business i don't know if anybody remembers that snicker commercial when the kids were like where's my shoe contract this that that blah 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 and it was like this old commercial. i used to crack up laughing when i seen it because kids know about this stuff now they know shoe contracts where's my gatorade deal where is this where is that nick he's coaching baseball and then all of a sudden he grabs a snicker he says sometimes you just need a snicker and they know he bites snicker like Oh my God, I got a handful of kids. You know what I mean? That's what that stuff reminds me of. It's remember the game. Remember when things were different. Those are the days that bring you back. They bring you back and you remember those things like, yeah, everything wasn't this big. Sometimes some people take things too serious. And sometimes we need to lighten up a little bit in life too, because we, we're putting extra pressure on ourselves for no reason. And I just started noticing that, like my daughter, going to college happy but she put so much pressure on herself and i'm like why are you relax you made it you got this far you you're doing okay your mom and your dad are doing everything possible to make sure you're okay you made it this far it's okay it's okay it will be okay everything usually figures it out you just have to be strong enough to realize that i can figure it out I think my mom and them did not teach me anything. They taught me things in a different way. You just have to bring it into the future of your life now. Because I know things my mom taught me back in the day. Yeah, 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 whatever. That stuff don't count with me. What? I was back in the day. Now, oh, she did tell me that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. My dad said that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And now I remember it, but it's just done differently. So a lot of things you got to remember, especially now, same stuff back then, different people. That's how it is. It's the same stuff. It's just different now. We just looking at it differently. And you have to be able to also just look at it and say, you know what? That is exactly the same thing. Like I tell people all the time, look at things like a club. 
you've been to clubs before. We've all been to clubs. If you haven't, wait. It's the same thing. <laughs> same thing, different people. It's the same objective back then as it is now. It's just different people doing exactly the same thing. It's just what we do. And we're repeating history over and over, but you don't think it that way. You're just like, oh, that was back in the day. And it's the same thing. Just look at it. Just open your eyes and say, it is exactly the same thing. Right. Thank you. Um, so someone asked, um, I, I think you touched on this earlier a little bit, um, okay. someone asked about the NFL um, having mental health for players who have left the game. And yes. you mentioned how players are lost after the game and, and some players mm -hmm. Sal, who died by suicide. Um, did they just never reach out for that help? Or do you know what happens in some cases where? Well, there are cases where people didn't have, we just didn't know. We we'll have people just didn't know. I'm sorry, but to say it, the movie Concussion brought a lot to the forefront. Right. And then at some point, sometimes it was too late. Somebody was already gone. They were too far gone and it was hard to bring them back. Um, but we didn't have all that stuff. And like I said, but we just had it. It was not there. You have to personally go seek it out. But again, we grew up in that mentality of I have to be tough. I'm fine. I'll figure it out. Right. We couldn't, we can't figure it out because it was beyond us. We didn't know that. We didn't know what we were going through. Um, it's like people in the military, you don't know what they're going through until they snap. Then it's like, oh my God, we didn't know they were going through that. Why? Because they are in their, as we say, personal hell. And you have no idea what's some, going through someone's mind until it's revealed. Maybe it's too late hopefully it's early enough because reality came to it in this there are players we have it now in the nfl um and i'm glad we do there are a lot of players now that are starting to really like i said touched on before they're taking advantage of it because they starting to realize yes i'm off a little bit something's wrong this is not right i should not be doing this as i will tell you say now i used to go in the tunnel and play i used to play in the tunnel I stay down there for days and then come out. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. And then I would go down there. And sometimes I was down there too long and took me a little bit longer to get out. You know what I mean? But that was me going down there because I thought that was okay. It's okay to go down there. It's who? Ain't nobody bothering me. How can I harm somebody but myself? And I didn't, you know, I'm more worried about harming other people, but the person that was doing it all the time was me and I was harming myself. And I had to learn to stop harming myself. Stop hurting me because without me, I wouldn't be here. You know what I mean? When you start doing like things like that, that's when you know something's up and you need to get, you need to step out and talk to some people and really look into her and say, yo, I really do need help because that's not normal. That is not a normal thing to stay in a place where you're depressed, not sleeping, anxiety, other things are going on that you're willing to hurt yourself but you don't want to hurt nobody else, which is great. But you're willing to hurt yourself, which is why, why would I'm, which is crazy to me. And not to say that word just like loosely. We are willing to hurt ourselves before we hurt anybody else. And that's crazy. Like, why would I want to hurt myself? Like, literally, you can bite yourself and not draw blood. You can't do it. It's just your brain won't allow you to hurt yourself. But but, I, but I'm willing to put myself through the, the mental turmoil to get to that point that I have to do the next level, which is, you know, whatever. And most players don't have that opportunity. Some of us don't make it. Some of us don't make Some of us are too far gone. And that is unfortunate. Anybody that gets to that point, we really do need help because right. it's scary. It's a really scary opportunity. Right. So along, um, going along with that, how we got a question, how do you convince other males that going to a therapist is a good idea and it doesn't mean they are weak or not a man, so to speak, as some of the perception out there has it that, I mean, you talked about going to therapy, you're a pro player, obviously, yeah. you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, but there are a lot of men out there who won't. And so someone asked if there are, what you would say to someone who, who's like, I don't need a therapist. I'm a guy, you know, that kind of mentality. Well, I'll say this in, okay, I'll say this and it's, it's kind of weird. I'll say it this way. In the black community, 
We don't need therapists. We got family. That's what they're for. <laughs> That's how it used to be. We don't need therapists. We need no. Unless they are clinical, I need to go find some people that's gonna help me. So what you say to a man like that is this: when you think you're strong, and I'm I don't know who it is who said it. If you think you're weak, how much harder is it for you or that person? to actually ask someone for help. How much more strength do you have to have to ask someone for help? Because weakness is easy. I'll look at, look at weakness as this. Hey, I don't need to do nothing. I'm okay, I'm good. Versus you wanna be a man, you wanna be strong, ask for help. Look how much strength it takes you to say, I, I, I need, it's hard to say it because we are not used to it. We're not supposed to be we're not, as a man, I'm not supposed to be in my feelings. I'm a provider. I make it right. I fix everything. I understand the world. I know everything. No, you don't. <laughs> That's why we don't know everything. That's why we're still discovering stuff. If you knew everything, it would be easy. The world is not easy. Life is not easy. Is it hard to ask for strength? Yes. But is it easy just say, can you help me? Those three, can you help me? Four words it can change your whole life. Because you know what? When you, someone hears that, they say, what? You, you're asking? Oh my God, I never, we don't do that. And you're not weak. It's just your circle of people around you. You got to watch who, be very wise who you're, who you're speaking to, your friends, and the people you keep around you. Keep your circle tight. Because if somebody around you said that you're weak for saying that, that's the person you don't need. Because you know what? That's the person that's going to get you to that next level of that where you don't want to go. Versus the person that says, you know what? I think I know somebody. You know what? We'll keep this between you and me. Let's go find, let's go find you some help. It's okay. But we just got to say four words and we'll stop. You stop real fast when you say those four words. Everything becomes real, real fast. Thank you. That's very helpful. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, for the people who asked that question, I want to be mindful of time. I know we're at 830, but Tony has generously said he would stay on and we do have more questions. So, but okay. I want to be mindful okay. for those of you um, who I know we're at 830. So um, we understand if you have to go, but I'm going to continue um, with Tony's permission. I know you had said in advance that you would stay on a little longer. Yes, I'll stay so, on. Thank you. So another question we got, um, and thank you all those, uh, all of you for joining us. Um, another question we got, um, so when you talked about going through that dark tunnel, what did you do on a daily basis to get you out of that dark, that dark tunnel? Like, like, how did you let go to move forward? Did you have certain songs or a prayer or something else to change your mindset when others were not around to help? Um, I basically meditated and prayed. I prayed the Lord's Prayer, whatever that prayer is to you. I meditated, just sat down. Literally, there's a corner right here that I sat down. It's under the, my sound of love. I sit in that corner and just sit there and just get quiet and just let my mind relax. Sometimes that's what helped me get through a lot of those dark moments. And then sometimes I have to really, you know, just listen to upbeat songs, things that are upbeat and stop listening to some of, some of the songs I do love. <laughs> you know what I mean? I love different types of music. But some some music is dark. It's dark music, and you have to understand what goes in your ear filters throughout your body. You know what I mean? What you keep watching and seeing on the news and stuff like that. If you just stop watching the news for a week, you'll feel great. <laughs> you'd be like, "Wow, I feel awesome." Why? Because I'm not getting filtered with this stuff about negative, 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 negative. Ah, oh, cute puppy. Negative, negative. You know what I mean? That's that's what they do. That they they feed you all this negative stuff and show you one little positive thing that happened in the world. And then right back to negative, like, oh, let me stay away from TV for a while. I stayed away from TV. And then I start thinking better. Um, start listening to every, every new song that came out. Stop listening to it. Relax. It'll, I'll get a chance to listen to it when I'm in a better mood. Let me listen to it when my mood is a little bit higher. I stopped listening to hanging around with negative people. Ugh, you always complaining. Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm done with that. I gotta go. I started putting myself in more positive situations, so I didn't have to. And I'm sorry, sometimes the negative people that you're around, it's your family sometimes. You gotta get away from them. You gotta have a way, because I know there's a lot of people who take those little staycations. I used to do that a lot, going to 
just get a hotel for the day and just get away. Just get away from everybody and sit in a hotel and and use the amenities and ah and and then I'm like, okay, I gotta go back. All right, I'm recharged. My battery's recharged. Let me get back into it. And that's what people need to start realizing. You can get away. You just gotta make your way. You gotta find a way to get away. And that's it. Stop. I'll tell anybody, stop watching the news for a while. You'll you'll feel a lot better about your life. Because you know what? We now we're bombarded with social media. We are bombarded from every corner of the world with negativity. And they know negativity works because it gets us riled up. And then it gets us wanting to be on the go out there and fight for this and fight for that. And I'm like, yeah, but uh, if I'm not here to fight for it, then why I'm here. So let me back off a little bit. I'll catch my news a little later when I'm in a better mood. And you need to just stay away from some things. Stay away from negativity. That's the biggest thing I can really say. Thank you. That's very, very helpful. Yeah. And one question, and I'm sorry, I missed this one. Um, okay. Um, how um, all the all the accolades that you got and winning championships, et cetera, like it, and all of that, how did that not help uh, you in terms of being in a better place? Like, in other words, it, the person's, I guess, wondering, like, you were a Rose Bowl champion and you were the star and, okay. you know, expected yeah. to get, um, mm -hmm. you know, the You know, you get the accolades, but why were you Yeah, you, you get the accolades, and then, and, accolades and then still, yeah. and, then, and then and then they're wondering, how, you know, how, how did that, I guess, how not you... propel you to be in a better place? Be yeah. You know what? That is a personal journey. That's your personal journey, uh, right. how that works. For me, I'll just say personally, yeah. Um, I should have been a better person, but that didn't mean anything. So what? I got all the accolades in the world. You'd still be depressed. This is an accolade. It's just something that you did. I did it, but that doesn't mean I was, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel great about myself. And okay, whatever. Is this something you get go through? We went through it. Um, I won a lot of accolades. Yeah. Did I feel good about myself every time? Yeah, during that moment. And then it was back to reality. Yeah, something's wrong. I'm I'm not feeling the greatest, and it's okay. You'll have your moments of ups. That's why they call them uh, valleys, uh, peaks and valleys. That's why they call them trials and tribulations. You're gonna be here, you go here. You come back up, you go. Ahead. It's the up and down. Those moments keep you out of that of the, that dark tunnel long enough. But after that's over, we gotta get back to reality because this ain't reality all day. Like a Super Bowl champion. Woo! Super Bowl. You see all the Super Bowl champions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It lasts about a, you know, it lasts those that right after the meme, you're on this high. Oh, you're not thinking about that. Out with your friends, just having a great time. Then you go home to your home state. Oh my God, they have a, uh, oh, red carpet. We got the pool. We, oh my God, the city loves us. Yeah. And that lasts about three days and back to reality. Because you know what? Now you're the Super Bowl champion. Now you got to defend it. <laughs> back to reality. Let's get back to work. You have one week off. Let's go. We got to defend that. Because you know why? Everybody's, we are now the targets. Everybody's looking at us. Every eye, everybody in the world is like this. Hmm. So you're the defending champions. Yeah. You're going to lose next year. No, we're not. You're not going to make it. If you know anything about the Super Bowl, Super Bowl champions usually don't make it the second year. That is routine. It used to be you also had the, the Sports Illustrated uh, taboo. If you were on Sports Illustrated, you would get injured. Like it was this whole thing. No, no, don't put me on news. I'm good. If you were on, um, if anybody knows about Madden, the video game, if you got on the Madden, it was called the Madden curse, you get injured. Don't put me on Madden. I'm okay. I'm good, nah, 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 because we believe in that stuff. Wear the same socks, wear the same dock strap. Uh, I always wore this shirt when I uh, won. You know what I mean? We are huge when it comes to <laughs> things like that. Uh, don't, don't curse me. And that was always been the thing. You know what I mean? Like you can be the Super Bowl champ and don't make it back the next year. You can be the champion of the soccer league, but you ain't gonna be there next year. Why? Because everybody's target, you're the target. Now everybody's gunning for you. It ain't that we snuck in and we were the underdog and we made it to the top. Yeah, we know y'all at the top now and we know exactly where to shoot because we y'all didn't show y'all hand. Now we know everything y'all got. What you gonna bring now that we don't know? Fortunately, there are some teams that go back to back to back. And then there you go. So Patriots did it. 
uh, Dallas did it. Pittsburgh did it. They do it. Why? Did they change something? No, they kept the strong. They just changed it a little bit because everybody's gunning for them. That's what we did. So was I supposed to stay happy all the time? Yeah. I wanted to, but it's called get back to reality. This, we got, I got to get back to work. I didn't get there because I was here all the time. I got there because I was here. I became the underdog and won it more. And when we won it, yeah, I was great. But then eventually you got to get back off that high and get back to work because here we go. And did it help my personal? Uh, yeah, I was there for a while. But then when that moment was over and that experience, I got to deal with what's going on up in here. And I'm dealing with that by myself because I don't have a friend. My, my friends aren't there no more. We all celebrate. Are in our own way, but I have to come back to reality and be like, oh, I'm still Tony. <laughs> I got to get back to work. I got to figure this out. And the good thing was sometimes it's like because you got to get back to work, you kind of just push it to the side and I'll get to it later. And then you keep getting work, go back to work and get things going again. And that helped me a lot, you know what I mean? Because I was constantly going and you don't have time to do things. When you, when you have accolades, you want more. Who doesn't want more accolades? You know what I mean? But you know, when you get that first one, you want that second one too. So get back to work and get harder. So you kind of forget the stuff you were doing. You just say, I, I, I just need to get back in there. And you know what I mean, that happens to a lot of us, but some of us don't have a chance to get out. They just stay down there and they never come up. And those accolades help, but they're not the, the all be all. That's just a moment in time that happens. And then you do got to get back to reality. Hope I answered the question. <laughs> Oh, I think so. Thank you. That was very helpful. Um, all right. So any, I know we're now, wow, we're close to nine. So thank you for yeah. all for staying. Um, thank you, Tony, for- No problem. Um, thank you. Such a powerful <laughs> impact on everybody. Uh, thank you, Rebecca, again, for um, bringing this idea. Thank you to the No Shame Any Board. And um, yeah, thank you all. And again, my uh, feel free to write me if you have any questions after. I'm happy to contact Tony. And he's been so gracious about being open to to hearing more questions and stuff like that. So right. um, thank you, everyone. Have a very good yep. evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Have a good evening. Be safe out there. <laughs> thank you.